The reverse slice drop shot can either be played from your forehand corner where you'd hit it straight or your round head corner where you'd hit it cross. The technique for these two shots is slightly different, so in this video, we're gonna show you how to master both of these. Before we teach you the technique, you first need to briefly understand why you would play each of these reverse slice drop shots. The straight and cross court reverse slice are great variations to add to your attack in both singles and doubles. And because they're deceptive shots, they'll hopefully either be an outright winner or set you up to win the point on the next shot. So for the cross court reverse, it looks like you're going to hit the shuttle straight, but it actually goes cross. And for the straight reverse, it looks like you're going to hit the shuttle cross court, but it actually goes straight. Okay, so now let's break down how you can master these shots. And first, we need to get the preparation right. Your preparation should be the same as your smash, clear, or other drop shots. This is because it's a deceptive shot, and if it doesn't look the same, then it won't be as effective. Like we've said in our previous videos on the basic drop and smash technique, you want your body to be facing sideways with your racket arm around a 90 degree angle like this, with your non-racket arm pointing up like this to help with your timing, balance, and your rotation. And for the grip, you need to be in a loose forehand grip for both the straight and the cross court shots. Okay, you're in the right position, but how do you actually hit the reverse? Well, the most important thing is your wrist and forearm rotation. So we're going to start with that. Unlike a smash, where you hit through the shuttle like this, at the last millisecond, you rotate your wrist through so that it's facing almost upwards like this. It's a similar action to either turning a doorknob or opening a jam jar if you're right-handed or closing the jar if you're left-handed. And this action is so important, we have a practice for you to do now. Wherever you are, sitting or standing, do two smashes with just your arm hitting through the shuttle like this, and then two reverses with your wrist rotation at the last second. We'll pause the video for you to do it now. And we're back. Now to know if you've done the movement correctly, put a racket in your hand, and just after you strike the shuttle, your string should face diagonally like this, and in the same direction as your palm. Your arm should still be moving in the opposite direction afterwards, as that's what makes your opponent think you're hitting it the other way. Now the straight and cross court reverse slice are similar in technique, but there are a few differences. So let's move on to the cross court reverse slice from your round head corner, and then onto the straight reverse. And finally, we'll give you a couple of great practices for you to master these shots in a match. So you're in this position after doing your preparation. You then want to bring your elbow through with a fast swing, and then you do the forearm and wrist rotation we've just shown to hit the left side of the cork if you're right-handed and the right side of the cork if you're left-handed. Your contact point is also really important. To hit the cross-court reverse most effectively, you want to strike the shuttle anywhere from above your head to over to where your grip is in line with your non-racket shoulder. You also want to have almost a straight arm at the point of contact. Look at the pros here. If you try to hit the reverse with a bent arm, then firstly, you've shown that it's going to be a softer shot, which makes it much more obvious to your opponents. But also, you're more likely to hit it into the net as your contact point is a lot lower. Yes, and because you're hitting the shuttle cross-court, the angle of your strings need to be facing in this direction as you hit it. But it's really important not to show this until the last millisecond. If you have your strings facing cross the whole time, it won't be deceptive at all, and it will actually be quite hard to hit the shot. Again, after you've hit the shuttle, you need to continue this momentum with your swing, with your racket coming across your body. You also need to consider the pace of your shot. Hitting the side of the cork means that it will lose speed as it's traveling towards the net. So you need to make sure that you're still hitting the shuttle with enough speed and forwards momentum for it to A, still actually reach the net, but also B, still make sure that you're generating a fast racket speed for it to look like a smash or clear. And as it's going cross, it's even more important to hit the shot with pace as the shuttle has a lot further to travel. How much further? Well, let's measure. one4 meters to be precise, so you need to hit it 1.4 meters further. Okay, so putting all of these steps together, the cross-court reverse slice should look like this. Oh, that's so beautiful. Now, we want to keep almost all of that technique the same for the straight reverse, apart from two things. Firstly, your contact point is slightly different. You most often hit this shot when the shuttle is either straight above your head or just out to the side of you. 
And the second difference is the contact point on your strings. Because you want the shuttle to go straight, you need to strike the shuttle before you turn your wrist too much. Otherwise, it would end up like this. And this one difference is why the straight reverse is much more difficult than the cross reverse. So putting all of these steps together, the straight reverse should look like this. Now we have one more technical point for you before we move on to the practices. And this is that how much you rotate your body in both of these shots will depend on factors such as the height of the shot and what position you're in on the court. Sometimes you'll have the time to rotate a lot, but other times you may not be able to rotate as much. But whatever the situation, you still have to have some sort of body rotation to make the shot effective. Okay, so we've gone through the technique for both of these reverse slices. but you need to be able to incorporate it into your game. So here are two simple practices to help you do just that. The first practice is quite stationary, where you're focusing solely on the technique. Make sure you include some movement though, as you need to get used to the timing of the footwork with the shot. It's a simple one to feed. All you need to do is a high serve to a corner. And getting a lot more advanced, you can also do these reverse slices with different speeds. Some might be a bit more loopy, where you have a slower racket swing speed, which reduces the pace on the shuttle. Or you can hit it faster like this one from Zheng Ziwei, where his racket is moving so fast through the air, which increases the speed that the shuttle travelled at. As I said, these are advanced variations of the reverse slice, but it is good to experiment with different paces. The second practice is a nice progression from this. This is where you hit a shot from a corner and then move to either hit a straight or cross-court reverse slice. And this replicates a typical movement you might do in a match. If you're a singles player, you might hit a clear and then move back to the forehand corner and do the straight reverse. And for a doubles player practicing the cross reverse slice, you might hit a shot from your forehand rear court to a feeder who lifts into your round the head corner where you'd play this cross court reverse slice. And for doubles players, you can also play this to the middle as you should be careful about doing too many cross court shots. You should then quickly assess how it felt after each one, maybe get some external feedback to add to your intrinsic feedback and then go again. It's important to mention that you need strength in your core in both of these slices, especially the cross court, to prevent you from collapsing when playing the shot and losing your control. And you also need strength in your legs to recover quickly from this position. If you're playing singles and they get your shot back, then the likely reply is a straight block, so you've got to be ready to move the longest distance on the court. And to do both of these shots, you need to be able to move quickly and efficiently to both rear court corners. And here are two of our videos that will help you do just that. And lastly, if you enjoyed this video, please give it a like, smash the subscribe button if you haven't already, and we'll see you on another video very soon.